Let me start a new section. Um, right here, section uh, seven. So we're starting a new chapter. So this is trig identities. We're gonna do trig identities, more trig identities, more trig identities, and we're gonna solve trig equations. That's basically what we're gonna do. Um, so this is to get you real comfortable with trig. So here's the reciprocal identities. So cosecant of x is the same as one over sine x. Sine, uh, secant of x is one over cosine x. Cotangent x is one over tangent x. Um, tangent x sine over cosine and cotangent x is cosine over sine. We've been kind of using this already, but and now we're going to state it emphatically. Um, the Pythagorean theorem, theorem, you only really need to remember this one. That's the only Pythagorean theorem you need to remember because these other two are produced by doing this, or just doing this and dividing out something. So if I have sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, most people have this in their in their in their heads right now. If I wanted to make this into this, all I'd have to do is just divide out cosine squared x, cosine, you know, and then write cosine squared x. Well, sine squared x divided by cosine squared x will, will just be tangent squared, right? Sine divided by, if I get two of these, I'll get tangent times tangent, which means tangent squared x. Cosine squared x divided by cosine squared x gives you one, and then one over cosine squared x will give me Secant, right? And so you can do the same thing here. Divide out by sine squared x. We'll get one. We'll get one for here. Um, cosine x divided by sine x. And then if I square them, I'll get cotangent squared x. And so you really you only need to memorize that one. These two, it's nice to have if you have a paper in front of you. That way you don't have to crunch through it. Um, so, so these are your reciprocal identities. Here's your Pythagorean identities. Here are what we call even and odd identities. So sine is an odd function, right? So this means it's odd, right? If I plug a negative of the function, I get back, if I plug a negative x into the function, I get back negative of the function, that makes it odd. This is an even function. If I plug a negative of the function, I get back the original function. And here, this is, this is again an odd function. And since this is odd, this is even, this is odd, that makes cosecant, all right, hold on. I said cosecant, but I wrote secant. Cosecant. X is also odd. So I could write this in. And the reason why that is, is because sine of X. And if I put a negative, it would come out the same. Secant is even and cotangent is odd. All right, so you know the even and odd for each one of these. Um, just have, do yourself a favor. Have these sheets in front of you somehow, some way. Um, yeah, so, okay. Uh, yeah, so yeah, this one we just divide by sign. Correct, very, very, very correct. Um, do yourself a favor, have, when you take the exam this time, make sure you have the notes in front of you because um, they're gonna be three pages of, the, you're just gonna have to need all the formulas in front of you. So have these available. Um, let me put a little note in. I may or may not do something, but I don't want to make promises I don't keep. <laughs> I just don't. Because um, it may take longer than I hope. Uh, but it may be super easy, so there we go. I made a note. I might do something super nice for you guys. We'll see. Um, so here's the co-function identities. So here you have sine. Uh, if I take pi over two minus x, I get cosine. If I take pi over two minus x, I get tangent and so on and so forth, right? And so the, this allows each of these um, And so here we have sine to cosine, tangent to cotangent, secant to cosecant, um, and then cosine to sine, uh, cotangent to tangent, and cosecant to secant. That's why they're called co-functions or cosine and sine, right? Because they're co-functions and secant and cosecant because they're co-functions and tangent and cotangent. Um, so what are we gonna do with all this? So we have all this information and the goal of this is to simplify expressions. We're gonna simplify a couple expressions and then we're gonna uh, verify expressions. And so these are like little proofs. Um, 
basically you make one side look at the other and you just and you're done right that's that is the goal so let's do this so here i have cosine cosine of t plus tangent of t plus sine of t one good rule of thumb um to do is just convert everything to sines and cosines and can i convert everything to sines and cosines yeah every single function can turn into sines and cosines right um so I can easily convert everything. So usually if I'm lost trying to simplify a, a, a trigonometric expression or prove a trigonometric identity, I might, I'll just convert everything to sines and cosines. It's not always better. It is not always better. Trust me, it's not. But then I only have to deal with sines and cosines and it makes it simpler, even though it might take longer. So anyway, so here, cosine of t, so I'm gonna just write that down, cosine of t plus tangent, which I'm gonna write as sine of t, cosine of t over cosine of t. So here I'm just applying this, this right here. I'm just applying it. And so here I get this, hold on. It should not be cosine of t, should it? It should be sine of t times over cosine of t times sine of t. Okay, so once I have this, um, here we have this, and so then we can just simplify it. So to simplify, we're gonna wanna add these two together. So in order to add this two together, I need cosine on the bottom here. So I'm gonna multiply this by cosine of t over cosine of t. Um, Cause I wanna add up two functions, oops. Um, let's see what I, oh, okay, sorry, someone wanted me to let him back in. Welcome back. All right, so here we have cosine, cosine of t's, and, and so we want to add them back up. And so to do that, we're going to have to multiply by cosine and cosine. So let's do that. So here we'll get, co oops, so up top I get cosine squared t plus sine, so I multiply these two squared t all over cosine of t plus cosine of t, so I can now add them up, which will give me cosine squared t plus sine squared t over cosine of t. All right, now I know another identity, cosine of t plus sine of t is, or cosine squared t plus sine t is one. So this is just one. So this is one over cosine of t, which is equal to secant of t. And so when I get this all said and done, I've simplified this as much as possible to secant of t. The simplify expressions you probably won't see, um, you probably see, but they're, I'll probably make it a multiple choice if I do an exam question um, for us this time, just because if I'm doing a written exam, I like to do verify the, verify the expression because you know if you hit the right answer. Um, but if you, if I have you verify, there's nothing really to show except all the work. And so we'll have to make this multiple choice and I'll just have you simplify this and give you a bunch of choices and see what you get. Oh no, I'll figure out how to do the other one. I bet I can do it. All right, so let's simplify another expression. Let's give you another example. All right, so here, we have everything's in sine and cosines, right? So we have sine, sine of x over cosine of x plus cosine of x plus one plus sine of x. And I was like, okay, so let's, so the first thing we probably want to do is put them together, make it a single fraction. And so let's do that. So here, in order to do that, I'm gonna have to multiply this by one plus sine of x. So I'm gonna have one plus sine of x on top and bottom. So here, I've added, and then for here, I'm gonna have to do cosine of x, so cosine of x over one plus sine of x times cosine of x, cosine of x. And then, since we have the same bottoms, we can add them up. So I'll have one plus sine of x times sine of x 
plus cosine squared x all over 1 plus cosine, not cosine, sine of x cosine x. All right. At this point, let's see if we can simplify the top a little bit. So I'll go ahead and distribute. So I'll have sine of x. All right. So that'll give me sine of x. This will give me plus sine of x. Oops. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x all over 1 plus sine of x cosine of x. But sine, sine squared x plus cosine squared x, well, this is just 1, right? And so I can write that as 1 plus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x cosine of x. Um, notice here, just for the sake of seeing what's going on, I move this one up front. So 1 plus sine of x, 1 plus sine of x. This is a factor, not a term, but a factor in both. So I can cross it off, and I'm just left with 1 over cosine of x, which, of course, is secant x. Okay? And so here I've simplified this, again, to secant x. Now do all of them equal secant x? Now it's just the two problems I chose ended up being that way. Um, and my, oh, yeah. So the Pythagorean, yeah, the Pythagorean theorem identity comes up a lot in these. So I gave you... So the next thing we'll have here is guidelines, right? Guidelines for proving trigonometric identity. Start with one side, pick one side of the equation, try to make it look like the other side. So that is simplify the complicated side. Usually this works out better, right? Um, and then, so pick one side and try to make it look like the other. If that fails, work on the other side. If one, if, if trying one side fails, work on the other side to get, to get where you got on the first. So, so sometimes you'll work on one side and try to make it look like the other. Uh, oh, there we go. I, sorry, I had to let someone in. Let me go back, let me start at the top. So in proving these Pythagorean identities, start with one side. So here, let's just say with this example right here, I'm gonna pick the more complicated side. I'm gonna work on this side as much as I can to make it look like sine of t. If that fails me, I'm going to mess with sine squared of t to try to make it look, to look like whatever I, however I move this forward. Sometimes you don't move it forward. Um, that and then here, here's my. If you're just completely stuck, it's always helpful to write everything in terms of sine and cosine. That way, you only mess with one term. Okay. So that's how we're going to do these Pythagorean identities. I'm going to do a couple with you, and then you're going to do. Actually, I'm going to do four with you, so more than a couple. Um, to get you kind of used on how to do these, and then we'll go from there. Um, and then you're gonna give it a try at home. This is a live class, I'd have you guys do it, and then I'd have you put a couple on the board. And I don't know, maybe someone says this is a huge whiteboard problem where everyone can log in and just draw stuff on the whiteboard and you can like look around and do that. Maybe I should tempt that some, at some point. I don't know, we're still all learning new things, right? All of us are kind of new to completely remote teaching. Well, I guess not. I've been doing it for a while, but still a lot to learn. It's not like I have, I have like 10 plus years or no, eight plus years of classroom experience and like only six months of online or remote teaching. I have a little bit more of online teaching, but you, you just play different rules at that point. All right, so one thing I want to talk about is LHS. This is a shorthand for left, left hand side. And then RHS is shorthand for right hand side. And so when you're doing these, um, when you're doing proofs, it's really nice to say which side you're working on. And so here I'm going to work on which side? I'm going to work on the left hand side because the left hand side is more important. So I'm going to say left hand side and I'm going to say that's equal to cosine of t and times secant of t minus cosine of t. And I want to make this all look like sine squared t. So here, and then I'm going to do, well, I can distribute. So let's go ahead and distribute. So I'll get cosine of t secant of t minus cosine squared of t. Um, cosine of t times secant t, well, let me write this as all this cosine so it makes it really clear what I'm doing. Secant just 1 over cosine of t minus cosine squared of t. Um, so 
square t. So cosine transpose cosine. So this is just one minus cosine squared of t. But let's look at let's look at the Pythagorean theorem real quick. So here if I, I'll write it in terms of t cosine squared t is equal to one. Or I could write sine squared t is equal to one minus cosine squared t just by minusing the cosine. So here I can say all this is equal to sine squared t, which is equal to the right hand side. And I'm done. So I have left hand side, math, 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 right hand side, right? And equals the right hand side. So there, we verified the theorem. Okay. And so, and we just use this, we use this right here, just mess with this a little bit, put it in here. Uh, last year I had a thread in all the time. Ivy Shining College. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I writing on the whiteboard and let's see how I can say this. In an in an art class, in an art class, when you're doing art, um, especially in a college art class. When you're doing art, about halfway through the class, you guys take a break and everyone goes around and looks at everyone else's painting, right? And in an art class, you know, you still kind of shy and then you, you know, you, you put out your art on the board and everyone does art critiques, right? You know, maybe we should have done this, maybe we should have done this. And, you know, it, when you're sitting there critiquing your piece, you're nervous as beans, but you're not really doing that. In a math class, right? In a math class, when you do that, it's like, well, it's right or it's wrong, right? It's not like, well, I, it's my opinion. It's like, you know, it's just some hard harder to take, but putting doing math in front of people on the board and having people live correct you is a wonderful way to learn because it forces any mistakes or any confusion. It forces them all to the forefront and it forces you to deal with them, fix them and work on them. Um, because when you're practicing, you should, as the old practice saying goes, it's, um, it's focus, focus on what you're doing, right? Uh, look for feedback and then fix it. Anyone in the sports world has seen this a thousand and ten times, right? Um, and so the thing is, is that we focus on our doing, but a lot of the time in math, we don't want feedback because <laughs> we don't want to have to fix anything. We want to be perfect the first time out. It's like, no, this is a skill. It takes time. You're going to make mistakes, right? Especially improving things. Improving things, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to do stuff that's not going to move it forward. You're going to attempt things and it's just not going to work. But, and when I do it, because I've been doing this for so long, I tend not to go down blind alleys, right? You, you're going to. And just accept it as part of the learning process. Um, oh, yeah. So basically, one equals one. Yeah, it's all we're proving here is one equals one or one side equals another. That's all we're doing. Okay. So I get you don't want to be on the boards, and I and I, I beg students, I beg students, and I still don't get that many volunteers. And it's usually my good students that go up. But I was like, well, they they get all the benefit of the learning, and so never be. One thing about learning is to kind of swallow your pride some days and just say, well, I'm going to go make mistakes. I might look like an idiot, but I will learn the most, right? It's hard, but I get it. It's super hard, but that's what you need to do. In middle school, my teacher had her names in sticks in a cup. I should have done that. I want to do that. I want to do some of like the elementary middle school stuff, right? You know, put have people put up little signs with their names so I can learn it for a while. And, um, and my teacher volunteers. So I get that. And, you know, and the only reason I don't do that is I don't, I don't like people being super uncomfortable because um, then they just don't show up. <laughs> so, all right, so let's look at this one. This one, let's look at this identity. So this identity is a little bit more fun. Let's use the word fun. <laughs> um, Uh, my experience with teachers who treat students like an elementary class and getting to spend like 10x better. Yeah, I, I get that. And um, it's like people's like, well, it's like, well, this is college, right? You know, because what's I don't even remember the show. There's a show or a movie where someone, it's just a lecture hall. 
and it's just one lecturer talking and all of a sudden someone just has a tape recorder sitting there and one student just has a tape recorder sitting there and by like you know as the term goes on it's just all tape recorders and so the professor walks into the room with tape recorders hits his tape recorder sets it down right and it says and it's like the lecture was the lecture is spoken but it went through neither of their minds and it's it's just a sad reality and if we would you know have fun and do stuff more engagement like you know we didn't it'd be it'd be better it would be legitimately better Anyways, enough pontificating. Let's do some math for a second. So let's look at this mess. So which side do you guys want to work on? You want to work on the left-hand side, the right-hand side? Um, uh, if you do the right-hand search, you can distribute the negative and then the denominators will be equal then. Yeah, so let's, 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 let's do the right-hand side. Let's, let's do this. All right, so let's work on the right-hand side, right-hand side. Um, if you used to use half McGraffin calculator up to the rejecter, I felt, yeah, so I'm really trying to, yeah, I'm trying to avoid all these bad stories. We all, in art and math, usually you have one bad teacher who embarrassed you, and then you think, oh, I'm not good at math, or I'm not good at art, and then you just stop just stop trying. Um, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. All right, so I'm going to work on this side. So the suggestion was to do distribute the negative. So let's do that. So here I have sine of x. And if I distribute the negative in, it'll be plus. Um, here I have two options. I can put the negative either t above or below. Um, so let's put it below. So I'll have minus one, minus sine of x. Um, I'm not positive I, I love that, but we can go with it. Um, so it's really close to being equal, but not quite, but we can still get it that way. So here I have one on top, which is nice. So let's just go ahead and since these are not technically equal, we can still make them equal. All we have to do is just multiply both sides by. So here I'm gonna do one minus sine of x plus one minus sine of x on this side. And over here I'll do minus sine of x, uh, negative one minus sine of x over negative one minus sine of x. Okay, so here I'll have minus one minus sine of x up top plus, and since this is a one, it makes it really easy, one minus sine of x all over uh, one minus sine of x minus one minus sine of x. So what do we get up top? Here we're going to have, up top we'll have plus one, uh, plus one, uh, negative one, plus one. So these two will cancel. I have minus two sine of x. So this becomes minus two, oops, minus two sine of x up top all over here. Let's go ahead and do this. So I'll have, um, Let's do this very carefully. So I'll have one times negative one, which gives me minus one. I'll have sine of x times negative one, or minus sine of x times negative sine of uh, negative one gives us plus sine of x plus negative sine of x plus one, which gives, no, so this is plus sine of x, this is minus sine of x, so that's zero. Sine of x times negative sine of x is plus sine of, uh, yeah, so negative negative will give me plus sine of x, sine squared of x. Let's make that a little clearer for you guys, sine squared of x. Okay, so this is what I have here. Um, here I'm going to pull out this negative one. So this is the same as 2 sine of x over 1 minus sine, sine squared of x. Okay, so here I have two sine of x, uh, one minus sine square of x. And then from here, I'm going to convert this 
So here, once again, if we did our Pythagorean theorem, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x. So if I move the negative, if I move the, this over, so I get cosine squared x. So this is equal to 2 sine of x divided by cosine squared of x. Uh, random question, but what is this application in math? Like, where would we use this? Uh, oh, that's right. Hold on. Let me catch up to you guys. Uh, my math teacher talked about stealing has been money all the time, then she died the summer after. <laughs> wow. Um, that was unexpected. Yeah, random question. Okay, um, go ahead and I don't mind the sign conversation. Random question. What is the application of this in math? It's like where we're going to use this. You're going to use this. Um, let's see how I can use this. This this pops up in, in, in engineering problems when you're pretty far in engineering. Um, you're going to have weird things come out just because of the Ge geometry of something, right? So here, if, I like a, if I'm trying to find some really weird geometry, so I have this thing, I shoot in a wave, and you're going to have the response to be something, right? Um, you're going to want to simplify this. It's an, it's an, it's inevitable to use calculus, but let me see, I can say this politely. Sometimes mathematicians just do stuff to do stuff, and this isn't too far from that. Um, it because we know how to do all this stuff, it ends up being super useful to um, manipulate things later. And since we've done all this for time after time, it's like, when, when is this ever gonna be super useful out in the real world? Like this problem here, probably not very much. Now problems like this have occurred all the time in um, optics, use, optics or anything with waveforms. Um, and so that's when it pops up. And so not these particularly, but things like these, and then we've used that to solve things. I use this in my, uh, I've used this in my dissertation in order to make something excessively simpler. Um, and remind me after this, I'll show you for two seconds. I'll probably get to get you lost in two seconds, but I'll show you after this, okay? So here, once we get to this point, are we getting close to this? Well, we have the two, we have the two, so that's good. Um, and now I want a tangent and a, a tangent and a cotangent. Or... So here, I can stop here. I'm going to stop here for the left. I'm going to work on the left hand side for a second. Or I could do this, but I'm going to work. I'm going to show you. Let's pretend I, let's pretend I got stuck here. So I'm just work on the left hand side for a second. I have two tangent and secant. So I'm just going to convert that over to what it is. So this is tangent of sine over cosine of x. And then secant's one over cosine of x. And if I just put that together, that's two sine of x over cos cosine squared of x. And then these will equal each other and we're done, right? So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing this is I could have just split, I could have split the multiplication, put one over cosine and gave me a tangent, and then left over was secant. That's fine. Either way you want to do it. So work on the right hand side, work on the left hand side once. Once these equal each other, you're done, okay? All right, let me do the other two problems before I pop out why this matters. Why this matters is, is an important question. So let me, I'll show you two in a bit. All right, so here we have, um, so here's one of, the, one of the sides. I'm like, eh, I don't know if one side's better than the other. And so let's actually work on both sides. So here, just work on uh, let's work on the right hand side for a second. So here I have secant uh, theta plus tangent theta. And I don't know what to do, so I'll just convert it into sines and cosines. So I have one over cosine theta plus uh, sine theta over cosine theta. These have the same bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and put them together. One plus sine uh, theta over cosine theta. Okay, I, at this point, I'm not sure I can fix this side any better. So let's work on the left-hand side for a second. 
All right, so here I have cosine theta over one minus sine of theta. Uh, for kicks, uh, for kicks, and just because I kind of can guess what we're doing, maybe we should move the sine up top, right? And because if we move the sine up top, we just multiply by its uh, conjugate. So one plus one plus sine, one plus sine of theta. Because right, here I'll have a difference of squares, and the difference of squares will give me a cosine on the bottom. Because here I have sine up top, cosine on the bottom. So in order to kind of get this to do that, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, or kind of the conjugate. Because when I do this, I get cosine theta up top plus 1 plus sine of theta. And then down below, I'll have 1, one squared plus the sines cancel out, because here's the difference of squares, right? Or, and so, because this would be negative sine, this would be positive sine, so that ends up being zero. So this is minus sine squared, minus sine squared theta. And at this point, we know minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta, or one minus sine squared theta is cosine squared, because we've seen it a couple times at this point. Plus sine of theta, oops, I forgot my little parentheses, over cosine squared theta. And here, if I cross off one of, the, get rid of one of the cosines, I'm left with one plus one plus, sorry, sine of theta over cosine. Oh, oh, just not, just normal cosine theta. And then now I have the side equal to this side, we're done, okay? So sometimes you work on one side, oh, I only got so far. And you're like, okay, well, how do I make this side, the left-hand side, look like this side? So I think, oh, I have sine on the bottom and cosine up top. But if I multiply by the difference here, I can get a cosine down below. And maybe uh, co actually cosine squared, and maybe I'll cancel out the one up top, and it does. Okay. These are these are going to take you time. So my suggestions: work on them tonight, right? Work on them tonight. Unlike unlike the solving the triangles, where there's a, a direct path. It's like when you're solving when you're solving the triangles for law of sines and cosines, there's a direct thing to do. It's like if it's if it's side angle side, this you apply. You apply either law of sines or law of cosines. Where? Well, you can usually solve for one of the angles. And once you solve for one of the angles, you can just, or, or one of the angles aside, once you do that, you can just, and then it makes it clear how to solve for the next one and the next one. And so you can just work through it, right? These, these are like puzzles. They're like puzzles. There's no, I cannot give you a formula. Do blank, do blank, do blank, and it works. It's usually just kind of mess with things until do this and so they're like little logic puzzles all right so let's look at this mess <laughs> on this mess i'm going to start i'm going to start with the right hand side because to me the right hand side is more messy than the left hand side so let's start with the right hand side all right so the right hand side is tangent tangent squared theta over a secant theta minus one. Here, I'm gonna to try to move, I'm gonna to try to move the secant up top, use it because I just don't. And so to do that, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna multiply by secant, or secant theta, hold on, I'll put in, and this is a complete mess, secant theta plus one, secant theta, Plus one, and the reason I'm doing, I'm showing you this trick twice because it's a useful trick. If you have like a function minus something on the bottom, just go ahead and do plus one, and then you can usually, usually one of the Pythagorean theorems will allow you to get rid of it or make it better. All right, so here we're just going to do this, and so here's the here's the kind of the trick. So I'll have tangent squared theta secant uh, secant theta or secant plus one all over here. This will be secant squared theta minus one. Okay. And then we're gonna go, well this this looks like something that might be a Pythagorean theorem. Do we have something that looks like it? Let's go to here. Well yeah. Here, if I manipulate this one, just move the one over, I'll have secant squared x minus one equals to tangent squared x. Um, 
like I said, when you first started doing this, you may not recognize to do this immediately. Um, but you will in time. It's one of those things, the more practice you get, the easier so it becomes. So this is just tangent squared. So this is just tangent squared theta sine secant theta plus one over tangent tangent squared theta. The tangent squared theta cancels, so this is just secant theta plus one. Well, can I make this look like secant theta plus one? Oh, yeah, betcha, right? And so let's just do left-hand side is equal to one plus cosine theta over cosine theta. I can, I can, if I have a single numer numerator and two denominators, I can do this. This is an allowed thing to do. Over cosine theta over cosine theta. Cosine theta is of course cancel. This is of course secant theta. So I have secant theta plus one is equal to secant theta plus one. So we're done. Okay. So just work on these, give these a try um, on the homework. So my suggestions, work on them today. Today, just try them all. You're not going to finish them all today. You, you'll get stuck in a lot of slices. Go to bed, try them again tomorrow, and then you'll find out, you'll think of things differently. Um, and that's how you do research. When you do research, you get to a point like, oh, I'm stuck, and then you go to sleep, and then the next day you're like, oh, here's a new idea.